Welcome back to this Black Hat series of Executive Spotlights. Terry Sweeney here with Black Hat, and I am joined now by Danny Jenkins, CEO of ThreatLocker. Danny, thanks for joining us today. Thank you for having me here today, Terry. Uh, our topic is um, staying ahead of the changing attack landscape with uh, zero trust. But, uh, but before we get there, um, it, it feels like a, a, a big driver of the, the whole zero trust movement has been, I guess, a, a parallel uh, movement uh, around something uh, known as ransomware. Um, talk a little bit about how you see ransomware evolving to, to make perhaps zero trust more important than ever. Well, and I think if we think about even just stepping back further than that, we think about the evolution of malware. And I remember back in 2001, the, the world's most notorious virus was this love bug. And it, 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 it spread across about a third of the world's business computers and essentially it emailed everyone in your contacts and said, I love you. That was the, the whole thing of it. And if we, if we change that to what we saw with colonial and oil pipelines being shut down and meat processing being shut down, that's the new norm in malware. So it, it's not just about ransomware evolution, but it's really malware evolution. When ransomware started, it, it was very scattered but now it's got so targeted and so pinpointed and they're exploiting vulnerabilities and they're exploiting uh, obviously still users and they're, they're planning to get into people's systems. It's now turned into billions of dollars of industry in its, uh, itself. I, I, I feel like looking back on that, I love you bug with a bit of nostalgia, like, oh, so benign, but uh, it, it's, as you say, uh, things have evolved and uh, Big money is at stake, and ransomware has evolved into basically, uh, you know, crime as a business. And you, know, and you know what's terrifying about it more than anything else is we, we think about the Colonial Pipeline. I think they pay four and a half million dollars uh, ransom. You got to ask yourself, what would have happened if they didn't get their data back? I mean, what if they couldn't restore from backups? What if they couldn't get their data back from a ransom? If you think about the scale of this, that. About 80% of ransom where when you pay, you get your data back, but there's still a large portion of attacks that are for um, reasons other than business. They, they just hate the United States. They want to shut down oil, ideological reasons. Sure. Um, that's great context. Um, let's, let's, let's shift then to talking a bit about zero trust. Um, it's, it's very much in the vanguard. Um, and consequently, <clears throat> it's, uh, I'll just say curious, how many definitions are floating around out there uh, for, for zero trust. Um, tell us how you define it and, and what distinctions you make that you think are critical. So I, I think you, you're right. It's almost become into a buzzword. It's almost like the AI of <laughs> the, the previous few years and everyone wants to throw it into their, their marketing. Um, I think the first time I've seen it clearly defined was actually in the latest White House executive order where it defined it. Uh, because I remember reading this executive order and it's talking about zero trust, zero trust, zero trust. I'm thinking, well, what does that mean to you? I mean, that's kind of just playing to the marketing world, but it's actually then further down defined as zero trust means least privilege. And, that, and that's how we define it. It's about only give what is needed to perform a function. And whether that's a user's access to data, whether that's an application's access to data or an application's access to files, or whether that's an app, a user's ability to execute a program or an application. So where we really think about it is, you know, what it means is least privilege. It means less, less access, less files, less programs, less of everything. It means more, less surface area and more secure. The, the way we operate is really don't let anything run that isn't explicitly trusted, that isn't needed in your environment. Mm -hmm. And then when something is allowed to run, assume it's going to eat your files, assume it's going to be exploited and only give that program access to what it needs access to, to perform its functions. Thanks. I, I appreciate you uh, just establishing our, our definitions here. Um, that, that being said, um, how do you think companies should harden their environments against these, these kinds of cyber threats, uh, zero day exploits, ransomware, of course, um, other ills that, that befall networks, users, and their data. And it's funny because you mentioned zero day exploits and back in 2005, it, there really wasn't any zero day exploits that people were getting hacked with. There was zero day, but normally they were being patched before there was an, a, a vulnerability was being patched before there was an exploit. Now we see it all the time. We saw Kaseya, we saw um, SolarWinds, we saw um, the latest uh, Office vulnerability or Internet Explorer vulnerability, if you like, that could download malware from your office. And it, it's getting harder and harder to patch in time because Microsoft's releasing the patch after the, the exploit is available um, or whoever it may be. 
is releasing the patch too late. So I, I think the first thing is we shouldn't ignore the traditional old, we should patch our systems, we should make sure we don't have non-zero day exploits, but we need to just take away privilege from everything. So if you take away privilege from a vulnerable application, I mean, you, you can't take away everything, but if you take SolarWinds as an example, it only needed to talk to SolarWinds, it only needed to talk to certain things. So if there's a case of something vulnerable in an application, if there's malicious code embedded in it, if there's an ex a vulnerability in it, the amount of damage it can do is really limited to what it needs to do. And, and let's face it, most of the things we run today don't need access to all our data. Mm -hmm. So if we can say, hey, nothing can run, so an exploit's not gonna be able to download new software or new malware or new remote access tools that hardens the environment. If we can then take away a program's ability to do things it shouldn't do, so PowerShell's ability to talk to files, you, you, you stop it being used if you take away um, Office's ability to call out to PowerShell. These are just ways to harden it. So when there is an exploit, it's not gone. I mean, the, the vulnerability is still there. The exploit is, is still available, but it's severely kneecapped. So the amount of damage it can do, the amount of data it can extract, the amount of files it can encrypt or programs it can install are so limited, you're not worrying about my world ending because something happened that shouldn't do. What you're describing sounds like containment. Yeah, and, and we, we refer to it as ring fencing because it is really, it is containment. Um, but quite often when you think about containment, you think about things like sandboxing, you're thinking about, okay, this can do nothing. But you can't say something can do nothing because then it becomes, you're going this entire, okay, I, I'm going to sandbox this program. Or I'm going to completely contain this program. But whereas we're saying we're going to, we feel like you just give it exactly what it needs. Uh, because when you look at it at a black and white, is it contained or isn't it contained? That's not always the case. If you run QuickBooks, it needs to see your QuickBooks database. You can't say, okay, this is completely contained. Or if I run PowerShell, it might need to be able to call out to Office 365, but it doesn't mean it needs to call out to everything else on the internet. So just really almost selective containment about, or select contain by default and then allow what it needs. Danny, thanks for the perspective on zero trust, including a, a useful and more complete definition. Appreciate you joining us for this Black Hat Executive Spotlight. Thank you, Terry. We've been talking with Danny Jenkins, CEO of ThreatLocker. This has been Terry Sweeney for Black Hat. Thanks for joining us, and we'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.